with a couple injury updates and more this is wrestling hub my name is john and you're watching the wrestling report before we get into the rest of the video make sure you subscribe to wrestling hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling also don't forget to follow us on instagram at wrestling hub official and follow us on twitter at wrestling underscore hub Touching on the run of LA Knight in WWE so far, former WCW star Conan said on his Keeping It 100 podcast, I don't know why you'd have a guy when it's so hard to get people over, is over, and you haven't even pushed him. There's so many great things you can do to make money with him. Why you wouldn't take advantage of him and try to take his knees out? And I could see him as a universal champion, and if they gave him a proper push like we've seen them do when they want to, why not world champ? During an interview with Chris Van Vliet, lead localist for Downstate, Zach Call, talked about his legal battle to get Cody Rhodes' theme song in WWE. I don't want to give away too much about how Cody Rhodes was able to use Kingdom in WWE, but we were aware that Kingdom was coming, and we were in a little bit of a legal battle, and Cody Rhodes is absolutely the man. We were on the phone with lawyers and agents and WWE's lawyers and composers before, and we have been with them since 2009. And we all have regular jobs, and we just wanted our cut of the pie on this one. We know what happens when you we're not Joan Jett we're not living color but when you use a real song they get paid those artists get paid it's not a part of WWE's work and this is a song that we wrote When it comes to rumors of him being set to appear at the previous WrestleMania, Gangrel told Wrestling News Co., I believe it may have been pitched, but I never heard about it. I called Edge and said, hey, where'd all of these rumors start? And he goes, ah, they think they know everything. As WWE has introduced the World Heavyweight title that will be won by either Seth Rollins or AJ Styles at Night of Champions, BWE reported that the new World Heavyweight Championship will have its historical lineage of 2002 onwards. Saturday's winner will be added to the title holders list. With Mercedes Monet reportedly suffering a broken ankle during her match for New Japan against Willow Nightingale for a new belt, Dave Meltzer noted this on Wrestling Observer Radio. The NJPW Strong Women's title was created for Mercedes Monet, so it wasn't like there would even be a championship if she wasn't supposed to win it. So this Willow winning it changes everything. Mercedes obviously made the decision in the match that she couldn't continue, and that's what happened. During his absence from pro wrestling due to suffering a concussion, Adam Cole revealed on the Swerve City podcast that he made plans to retire. I'm not kidding, and I'm sorry because this sounds like such a standard answer, but I really do mean this. I was mentally preparing to have to start a new life without wrestling that was so difficult for me. I'm thinking, maybe I'll Twitch stream, maybe I'll do something in gaming, maybe I'll start a wrestling school. I was really mentally trying to prepare myself for that happening. Being cleared and being able to come back and travel again and being on an airplane, walk out to the the ring and have a match my goal going forward is just to be able to continue to wrestle when i was able to come back and wrestle daniel garcia and be out there with brit and the fans and the confetti came down it was my favorite moment of my career because of how much it meant to me and how for months and months i thought i wasn't going to be able to come back at this point of course i have goals like i want to move up the ranks in aew and challenge for maybe someday be a world champion and travel and do more things and awesome stuff within wrestling at this point when i wake up there is a whole new appreciation for this job i never lost appreciation for wrestling but now after going through what i went through i'm not kidding every single week i show up at tv and i'm like i have the best job in the world this is incredible wrestling week to week that's the main goal
When it comes to Will Ospreay advancing in the IWGP U.S. Contender Tournament, Ringside News added that according to a report from Wrestling Observer Radio, Ospreay is currently dealing with an AC joint injury in his right shoulder, which has affected his overall condition. The injury was initially sustained during his New Japan Cup quarterfinal match against Mark Davis in March. Although medically cleared to return last month, Ospreay admitted that he was still experiencing discomfort in his shoulder at that time. The upcoming match between Ospreay and Lance Archer in Osaka on June 4th is currently planned to proceed despite the injury concerns. The winner of this bout will face Kenny Omega for the United States Championship in what is expected to be a hard-hitting encounter. Andrade has been advertised to be a part of AEW's new Collision show, with this being said about him returning to in-ring action on Wrestling Observer Radio. Andrade will be back in time because Andrade booked. Andrade is actually working a show in Mexico two days before the AEW Collision debut, which I believe is going to be the first match back. So he should be back on that show and ready to go after his surgery to repair a torn pec. Speaking of AEW Collision, former WCW president Eric Bischoff said this about the new Saturday show on his 83 Weeks podcast. Tony Khan once said, early on after the start of AEW, I'm not going to make the same mistakes WCW made. I'm not going to go into the litany of mistakes that have been made and continue to be made by Tony. Many of them are similar to the mistakes I made. He's making the same ones. This is another one where if I was Tony and I was looking at the long-term viability of my brand, I would do everything I could to talk Turner out of making that Saturday night show if indeed they're pushing it on him. If Tony's stepping up and wanting to do another show for any reason, then I question his judgment because he clearly doesn't have the resources. Because I lived through that. I hoped Tony wouldn't make that mistake again, but here we are. The point is Tony needs to establish AEW to begin a growth pattern in AEW to create a demand in that growing audience for additional programming. I don't know that he's created that demand. Confirming earlier this year that she is no longer a part of WWE, Alicia Fox took to Twitter recently to write, Nah, ain't retired yet, shaking my head. Well, I'm unretired then. I want to give a large thank you to ATD Promotions for hosting us. I am a part. I didn't hear a three count, but count on me. Love y'all. See you soon. It seems a member of the Damage Control faction is out with an injury, as Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio. The injury took place in the same match on May 12th, and Liv Morgan was injured in with Raquel Rodriguez and Morgan versus Kai and Bailey for the WWE Women's Tag Team titles. The word was that she was injured after Morgan suffered her shoulder injury, and the knee injury came in a spot where she knew Morgan was hurt and was trying to protect her. It would be added that Dakota Kai, I believe, is having surgery tomorrow for a torn ACL, so that's probably six to nine months out, so best wishes to her. Posting a couple of photos to his Instagram, Goldberg, who is expected to go on a retirement tour, showed off cuts on his face that he got from the shooting range, as he said, T-Post 1, Goldberg 0. With it looking like CM Punk might not return to AEW for the debut of Collision over Ace Steel not coming back to be a producer for the show, Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, we don't know if CM Punk's coming back or not. I know it's not dead though. At least it wasn't dead on Saturday like he wasn't going to. What if he starts again and quits? This would also be said by the Wrestling Observer about a requested feud for CM Punk with it said that before the issue started, I think Punk asked for Samoa Joe. That's why it was going to be Samoa Joe. Yeah, that's why it was going to be Samoa Joe. Finally, it was noted by Raj Giri on Twitter Spaces that CM Punk has been sent a huge warning by the company. AEW sent a legal notice to Punk yesterday that he either has to comply or they're going to file a suit against him.
As Cody Rhodes is set to take on Brock Lesnar at Night of Champions, it looks like he may be off programming following the event, with Brian Alvarez saying on Wrestling Observer Radio, I know and he's the key guy. He's the main event on these house shows, and he's the biggest drawing card that goes on the road right now. So it is an interesting storyline. You're right, are they going to keep him out for some time? My guess is that maybe it is a way for Brock to win the second match and Cody to save face, but we fought Brock with a broken arm, and they're split at one win each, and they can do another match down the line, or maybe they just make Cody into a big superhero. In some unfortunate news, a wrestling legend and former WWE and WCW stars passed away at the age of 64, as Jack Lord wrote. My friend Peggy Fowler, aka Peggy Lee Leather, Lady X, the thug, passed away this morning. She was an international wrestling star, appearing in every major promotion in the United States, as well as numerous international tours worldwide. She was still involved with women of wrestling until fairly recently. She was also the stepsister of the late Winona Little Hart. I first met Peggy in 1985, and we remained friends all of our lives from that point on. She was a tough lady, but also one of the sweetest. I have so many stories of our times together, the mixed tag matches that we had that also involved Selena Bambi Majors, and how we always looked out for each other on the road. Rest in peace, sweetheart. I'm gonna miss you. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.